I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome back to my studio. This video is part six of my fold forming series. You will discover how to use fold forming in your jewelry designs. You have learned many different fold forming techniques from watching this series. You probably have a large pile of experiments and examples of air chasing, air piercing, line folds, T folds, multiple and boat folds. What do you do with these examples? You know how to do these techniques. The big question is, how can you use these techniques in your jewelry designs? We are going to look at 17 of my demonstration examples from most of the topics in the fold forming series and see how I have made them into jewelry. Then after looking at the jewelry pieces, I will demonstrate the steps in making a pendant using a copper air pierced example with three silver fold formed leaves. I'll show you how to make the leaves more three dimensional by forming them over a stake using a forming hammer. I'll even show you a new tool that is really cool. I can't wait. Let's get started. This pendant has two simple line folds with sterling silver wire, sterling silver bale, and a stone setting. Here's a simple multiple fold with textured dome. This pendant has three scored line fold forms. Then they were soldered together and this gives a more interesting and more complex look than just a single fold form. This is another piece made from two scored line forms, a wedge T-fold, and topped off with a silver dome. This small pendant is a free-form organic fold with silver forged wires and a stone. Here is a simple T-fold flattened with copper wires. This piece is a combination of a single line fold forged on the fold into a circle and a multiple line fold with sterling silver wires. This pendant has multiple line folds, a copper bale, and bone and beads for decoration. This pendant incorporates two line fold forged forms with a sheet that has a triple line fold, wedge folds, and texture. This pendant uses an air chase piece, single line forged piece, and a textured dome. This pin has three triple line folds that have been sawed into sections, finishing it off with a single line fold disc with texture. One large boat fold and tubes with domes make up this pendant. Boat folds are the theme for this pendant. A forged wire is used as the bale. This pendant and earrings are made from organic folds and then sawed out from the same sheet. A dominant triple line T-fold is split by forged sterling silver wires and silver wire bale. This pendant is a combination of a split leaf fold, air chase fold, and wires. The leaf fold and air chase folds have been riveted together. This organic fold form has forged silver wires and a stone. As you can see, by using fold forming techniques, there are hundreds of design possibilities. You can modify and combine fold forming techniques to make your jewelry designs one of a kind that stand out from everyone else's. As promised, I'll demonstrate making a copper air pierced 
silver fold formed and wire pendant. Here's the copper example, the rough drawing and the finished pendant. Let's get started. We need to cut an oval out of this section of the air chased copper and I'm going to be using a template. I'll simply draw a line on the copper and then saw it out with the jeweler saw. I've marked it on the back and you'll notice that I've used a silver sharpie so I can see the contrast a little bit better. Plus this is smoother through here so I'll be able to saw a smoother oval. To saw this metal that's so uneven, it's really difficult. So I have to make sure that I try to hold this nice and tight on the bench pin so it won't move very much. But uh, it does have a tendency to move a lot. So uh, I'll just try to be real careful. Now that I have it sawed into the oval shape, I'll take my file and start smoothing the edges and also bringing it back to the exact size that I want. I've cut it just a little bit larger than the original template size, but I'd rather do that and then file it down to make it the size instead of cutting it too small. I've glued the drawings of the leaves to the silver sheet using rubber cement. I like using rubber cement because it holds the, the drawings down to the metal really well. Plus any excess that's on here, you can just simply rub it off after it dries and it cleans it up really well. Now we're ready to saw these with the jeweler saw. I'm leaving it a little bit wider here because I want to make sure that I have plenty of room to fold the metal over. Now I'll take and file these edges, make them nice and smooth, and then we'll be ready to bend them and forge them. I want to put a single line fold down the middle of this leaf and as you remember we normally would chuck it up into the vise and then bend it on over and then we can do our forging. But this is awfully thin right through here and so I've got to find an alternative that I can use to hold the metal to bend it on over. I found one of these right here. This is called a hand seamer. You put a piece of metal in there and then clamp it down with just like a pair of pliers and then you can bend the metal over. This is nice and sharp. I've filed this so it is really extra sharp through here and then that way I can zoom in and stick my metal into the seamer, clamp down on it with my hand and then there's a little clip back here that it'll hold it nice and tight and then I can take my planishing hammer and bend this over. So it's just like a vise only real nice and sharp. I got this at Harbor Freight. It's really inexpensive and it works just beautifully for holding little pieces. Now I can take my planishing hammer and tap it over and make a nice sharp bend. there we have a real nice sharp bend. Now we'll take our forging hammer and forge right along the folded edges to make a nice sharp line here. We'll do it on our bench block and remember when you're forging that you want to keep it 
slightly tilted this way and keep it to the edge of the bench block. Flip it over. Now we'll take it and open these up with our knife. Slide it in. Start peeling it back. Opening the leaves up. And now we've got ourselves a more three-dimensional form here to use for a piece of jewelry. What I'd like to do is take this flat area of the leaf and round it more so it's a little bit more three-dimensional. I use the edge of my stake and I'm going to use the forming hammer and just push the edges over the edge of the stake which will round this leaf part off. So I want to hammer just over the edge and as you can see this is starting to fold the edge of the leaf over. I can move it around on the stake to roll that edge. Just hammer a little bit more over that. Roll that around some more. So now you can see that it's more three-dimensional instead of flat like this side. So I'll continue to do this on all three of the leaves. As you can see, these are much more three-dimensional and sculptural looking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these three leaves together so it'll make it easier to manipulate and to put into position onto the copper piece. We'll solder those together and then we'll take a look. I've got this set up on the perforated soldering block with the pins holding the pieces together. So they're all touching really nice all along this area here. And so we'll flux that up and solder it. I'm using medium solder. those pieces up evenly and the solder will flow right down in and hold them together. There we go. And so it's flowed really well in this area. I'd like to do a quick polish of the sterling silver leaves before I start attaching any of the sterling silver wires to the leaves. It just makes it so much easier to polish without those wires in the way. I'm going to be using the flexible shaft with some white diamond compound on it and I want to do this very lightly uh, because there is that slight texture on the leaves from the hammer blows that we use when we were forming the leaves. So I'll be real careful on that, but let's do a little quick polish on this before we start attaching any of the wires.
When I'm polishing these leaves, I want to work in the lower half of the leaf. If I bring the wheel up around the top edge here, this trailing edge, the wheel will catch and it will wrap around it. We don't want to do that. So I want to stay in this lower section. And when I do the top part, I'm going to just turn the piece over and then work this way so I don't catch that trailing edge. That gives us a good preliminary polish before I put the wires on. Looks like it has all the scratches out, but it did leave that neat little uh, hammer texture in the leaves. The design calls for the sterling silver wire to be woven or integrated into the air chased and pierced copper piece and then coming out onto the sterling silver leaves. I've used 16 gauge round sterling silver wire for this and of course I've annealed it. So I'll start weaving it into the areas and bending it around using the round nose pliers. I just soldered the sterling silver wires to the leaves and I soldered this one right down in here and this one right down in this area here. I used easy solder and We'll clean those up and take a close look. I've finished adding the extra wires to the copper area and wove those into the holes and brought them up onto the sterling silver leaves. I've added a couple extra wires in here so we can attach a chain to those and then continue on up for the pendant. Now all we have to do is clean it up, liver sulfur it, and we're all set. Here is our finished pendant. I hope you have learned and enjoyed watching this piece being made. Fold forming, as you have learned in this series, is a departure from traditional metal smithing that makes us as jewelers and metalsmiths want to integrate and combine our traditional techniques with a different approach to our design work. Try using fold forming techniques in your jewelry designs. Your designs will grow, your work will become unique, and you will have fun and enjoy the journey. Here's a link to the entire fold forming series. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you for watching. I'm Greg Greenwood. See you next time.